Hi guys! This is uh, another short video in my technique series. Uh, I have had several questions from people who want me to go a little bit more in depth about how I prepare models for painting, you know, what goes into that. Uh, I think it's generally pretty straightforward. There's really not much to what I do. It's all really, really simple stuff. But I'm going to show you anyway, you know, just for people out there maybe who have never done any modeling before, have never painted any figures and, you know, want to know what is involved in prepping and maybe, you know, too, if you have done it before, maybe you will get some ideas from my technique that will be helpful when you're getting your models ready. All right, so the first thing you really want to want to do with your model is get it cleaned up. And this goes for both plastic and metal figures. There tends to be either little bits of sort of flash hanging off either from the casting process in the case of the metal or in the case of the plastic from where you trimmed it off of the sprue. And that all needs to be removed. And there's also going to probably be mold lines. Not all figures will have them and some will have it worse than others. But you're going to want to try to clean those up as best as you can. I use a sort of semi-doll craft exacto knife for this purpose. And you just want to kind of find those bits that aren't supposed to be there and knock them off and get that smooth. And then as for the mold lines, you have to be a little bit more careful there because you don't want to damage your model by pressing or trying to cut too hard. So the best way to remove mold lines is really sort of to scrape gently back and forth over them until you've sort of gotten those areas off. And if you push or try to actually cut with a knife, you risk damaging your figure or destroying detail. So you need to be just a little bit careful here. So yeah, just you just want to just carefully use your knife to clean things up. And don't forget to do the bottom of the base. That's really important because a lot of these are cast. The base on the bottom is uneven and lumpy. And so if there's any kind of bumpiness, you want to be sure to whittle that off or even file it off, depending on how much there is, because that'll make it a lot easier when you have to base your figure. You'll have a nice flat gluing surface. And if you don't do that, it's, you're just not going to have as good contact, basically. And there's going to be some areas that's going to be hard to clean off because if there's a lot of sculpting or whatever. But don't worry, that usually means it's not that important because there's so much sculpting that you're not really going to see the fact that there was uh, basically just uh, stuff in the way and it, it's just not going to really show. And also, at this point, this is also the step, if you have a multipolar model, uh, it has arms or bits that need to be added, that's particularly going to be the case with the plastic models because almost all of them are multipolar. This is the time to sort of attach those parts unless, of course, they get in the way of painting and you need to do them separately. But things like arms and, things, and weapons and stuff can often be attached at this point. And if you're using metal, you'll want to use um, a, a super glue for this. And if it's plastic, you can use plastic cement. Um, but w whatever you do, if you're adding parts at this stage, be sure that you give them adequate time to dry before moving on to the next step. Or else, you're, as you're going to see, that's going to cause problems. And here's why it's important that you let your figure dry adequately. Uh, I like to wash my models after I've cleaned off the sprue. And I do this because you can get into problems depending on you know how the figure was made. Sometimes there's residue left over from the casting process or the mold making process uh, from mold release or things like that that can interfere with the paint really sticking very well to the model. So I think it's a good idea to just really thoroughly wash your figure um, before you proceed. And the way I do that is I just use some sort of nice uh, warm water and some just hand soap and then I use an old toothbrush. It doesn't really matter and then I just really th thoroughly clean it. You want to be a little bit gentle with this, especially if it's a plastic figure or a multi-part figure because you don't want to knock things off. But, you know, I have understand that by a lot of modern figures it's maybe not even strictly necessary, but I still like to do it. I think it's a good idea to clean your figures. It makes them fresh. It's just good before you put on any paint to do this step. So just, you know, get your figure nice and clean and then you either just let it air dry or use a paper towel to get it, you know, uh, down, dried off and ready for the next step. 
Now I'm going to glue my figure down to the base I'm going to be using. I often use these little thick wooden discs and I use these as permanent bases. So if you're going to be permanently basing your figure on this, make sure you put on plenty of super glue when you're attaching it. If you plan to, after painting, sort of take it off of this and then kind of base it maybe as a group with other figures or whatever, just use a small drop of super glue and then it'll be more temporary and you can just break it off as necessary without damaging either the base or the figure. And now just once it's on, just you just need to let it dry a little bit so before you continue. But even that, it shouldn't take very long at all. And now it's time to apply the, the base coat itself. People ask me a lot about the paint I use to base coat with, and you can see it right there. I am a fan of enamels. I like to use enamels because I like a really good, solid, heavy base coat on my models that gives a great foundation that's not going to wear off easily or get damaged. And so I think that's why enamels are really great, especially since I tend to really touch my models a lot when I'm painting. And so I need a strong base layer so that, you know, what's already on there doesn't rub off. And this really helps with that. The only thing you need to be careful with with enamel is that they are tend to be pretty thick out of the bottle. So I often put quite a bit of paint thinner into mine just to thin them down extra so they flow on nice and smooth and that they won't get dry too thick and obscure some of the details on the miniature. And other than that, they're a little bit of a pain because you have to keep a paint thinner and, you know, and they take longer to dry quite a bit. The acrylics, you need to leave them for several hours. But, you know, all in all, I don't think it's too onerous. I like to do my models right before bed so that they can get a good long drying session in overnight. And in terms of brush, it really doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, you can see I'm using a really crappy old brush, and that's what you probably want to use too. You actually just want something big with good coverage. Just get something really cheap. It doesn't matter at all for this. You're going to ruin it anyway with the enamels. So, you know, you know, don't really sweat that too much. A little bit about the color of my paint. I use gray, as you've probably noticed. And the reason I like to use gray is because I feel like it's a nice medium in between color that will work on figures that are both sort of more kind of a darker figure with a lot of dark colors and also a lighter figure with lots of lighter, brighter colors on. The gray is sort of in between both, and so it will suit both models. So I like it. It's an all-around color. But you can also use black, as you can see, as a base coat, if you're, especially if you've got a darker figure. Or similarly, you can use white if you've got a figure with a lot of light on it. And both of these colors have strong pluses and minuses. A black base coat will make the colors on your figure appear richer, deeper, a little bit more vibrant. And white will make the colors seem brighter, um, lighter, they'll pop out more. And, you know, that's really good. But, and and that's, a, that's a great technique you can use to really add extra dimension to your figures when you're painting. But you get extra work because obviously if you're trying to paint say a, a figure with a lot of light colors and have a black base coat you're going to have to put on a lot more coats to get a good result and vice versa with the white if you try to put a lot of dark colors over a white base coat you're going to have to go into more you know detail to get that the way you want it but those are all techniques that you can use you know to get slightly different effects on your figure and you know, save yourself some time depending on what the overall color palette is. But gray is always a safe bet because either dark or light figures are gonna pretty much look universally good with it. You won't get some of the nice extra bonus effects you get with black and white, but you also won't get sort of the setbacks that you can get from those colors as well. I've kind of talked about this process before, but the next thing I always do is glue my figure to a handle. That's just so I can work it and hold it better when I'm painting. A lot of people use like old paint jars for this, but I find those too short. I want something nice and long that I can really get my fist around. And so I use these kind of dowels. I just get some dowels like from a hardware store and you slice them into, you know, good lengths that your hand fits on or fits around nicely and then use those for your figure. And you can reuse them over and over. What you do is you just put a very small drop of super glue and then just sit the figure on that base and just don't touch it until it dries and that'll be fine and then when you are done painting it there's just a little glue so it'll break off easily without any damage and you can see I also have a block here that I have holes drilled in it to hold my dowels so it's easy to put them down when I'm not painting all right, and here is the miniature. He's all prepped now, ready to go, ready for me to start painting. Obviously, you can see the base coat hasn't dried yet, and because it's enamel, as I said, it will take 
at least several hours, and I would leave it overnight if you can before it's ready to go. But this is basically pretty much what I do with every single one of my figures. The only exception is if I have a lot, maybe I use a spray can on them to get them done faster, but I don't do big batches a lot, so that's for me not so necessary. Uh, so uh, I hope you like this video. Maybe you got something useful out of it, especially if you're starting out and you don't know what's involved in getting figures ready to paint. You know, maybe this gave you some ideas. And in case you're wondering, yes, we will be actually working on painting this guy in one of my future videos. I know everyone would like to see some British World War II infantry. So yeah, he is going to be the subject of an upcoming video. So this is a nice sort of two for one for me. I got the basing, base work done on this guy and he'll be ready for later. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like this video, uh, share it, uh, leave me comments as usual, and I will see you next time.